welcome back to Ship Faced, everybody, to episode 3 in the Warrior Queen, Queen Mary's time in World War II. After winning awards in her peacetime career before World War II, the Queen never stopped getting attention and breaking records, as she continued to increase steadily the amount of troops she was able to carry per crossing. Queen Mary eventually broke the world record for most amount of passengers carried on a single ship. A staggering, whopping 16,000 troops were able to fit on Queen Mary and her sister Queen Elizabeth. That's an entire army division on one ship. Incredible. Still maintaining her swift speed across the Atlantic, the troops quickly gave her the nickname the Grey Ghost. On October 2nd, 1942, however, she met her first incident and struck and broke in half and sank a member of her convoy, HMS Curacao. Queen Mary was not permitted to stop, quote, for any reason whatsoever. This is mostly because of the fact of how many U-boats were in the North Atlantic at the time, but the order to not stop for any reason was not circumstantial. It was all-encompassing. And then in December 1942, Queen Mary was on a voyage leaving from Australia to Germany and was struck by a 72-foot wave, making her list 52 degrees to port. It was calculated much after the incident that had she listed so little as two degrees more, she would have capsized and sunk. However, being as resilient as her namesake, Queen Mary did not sink and carried on carrying full army divisions on each crossing, which unfortunately caught the attention of none other than Adolf Hitler. He saw the threat Queen Mary posed to his side in the war, being able to replenish so many troops per crossing. So he put a bounty on any U-boat captain that could sink either of the queens. And in 1944, U-853 spotted the Queen Mary and made a pursuit to attack. However, Queen Mary was not sailing alone, and a nearby aircraft carrier launched three ferry swordfish torpedo bombers in the British Royal Navy and attacked that U-boat and prevented it from attacking the Queen Mary. They did not sink the U-boat, it was sunk later by the Americans, but Queen Mary was victorious. About a year later, news reached the Queen Mary that the Allies had won the war in Europe. Celebrations as Queen Mary returned to New York, bringing most of the troops home, was an unimaginable spectacle. Every time she returned with troops to bring back to their home, to their families, the cheering and the celebrations from spectators and onlookers was so loud you could not hear any ship's horns. Streamers were thrown in the cities, people were dancing and kissing. It was an absolute euphoric moment. For the next two years though, Queen Mary remained in her battle gray paint as she continued to bring US troops home. Yes, it did take that long. And to resemble peacetime, Cunard painted the funnels back into the Cunard red color. Here we see Princess Elizabeth, heir apparent, her mother, Queen Elizabeth, Sir Winston Churchill, the Prime Minister, who said in his victory speech, the Queen Mary and her service in wartime has shortened the war by at least a year. The heroic crew and incredible ability of the ship is without comparison. After sailing a staggering 569,421 nautical miles, and carrying 75,000 troops and GIs, it was time for the Queen Mary to have a refit. This gave an opportunity to clean all the algae, apply new coats of paint, do the engine maintenance, etc. They also brought the beautiful finishings back and removed the aircraft guns, and Queen Mary was restored to her pre-war glory. She has survived rogue waves, potential U-boat attacks, constant threats of German spies infiltrating their communications, and none of this turned out to outmatch the Queen. Having achieved so much, her future looked as bright as her new coat of paint. Alright everybody, that's a wrap on Queen Mary's experience during World War II. Stay tuned next weekend to the fourth and final episode of the Queen Mary season. And stay tuned for my next season.